Well, awesome folks, awesome folks, go ahead and heart it up. What's up, Devin Jordan and Bravo Joe? BJ Stanton is in the house. Yes. All right. Go ahead and give me some hearts as y'all come on the broadcast. If you guys are re watching this, go ahead and heart it up. Art of Reality. What's up, Devin? How you doing, doing my man? All right. The Art of Realty has joined. All right. What's up, Ross from Florida? Thank you for inviting your followers, Heavenly's Property. That's good to know. That's good to know, Devin. Bowler for Life is in the house. Jan Bruce. It's all good, BJ. It is all good in my hood. Let me switch this around. Uh, can y'all hear me? MiamiHouses.net is in the house. Yes. All right. Y'all can hear me. So I'm actually doing this a little bit differently. I'm uh, actually outside in my backyard. If it gets too noisy, uh, just let me know. All right, Ross is working on getting out to, to Vegas. That's good. That's good. We're doing an event out here in uh, Vegas in March time. So uh, let me get to some light so that y'all can see me so I'm not looking like a shadow over here. All right. Man, I hear an airplane up here. All right, good afternoon, Ed. How you doing, my man? All right, Finley has joined the house. All right, so uh, afternoon, Miss Muhammad. I've uh, been following you. You're uh, getting ready to run a marathon. That's good. That's awesome. You rock. All right, so the event down in Las Vegas that we're doing, I'm uh, beautiful blue skies in Canada. <laughs> that's what's up. What's up, Finley? All right, how you doing, Miss Hill? Yes, uh, Sharonda, I believe that's your first name. All right, hello from Miami. Much love from Vegas. So y'all like the little beard I'm growing? I'm trying to grow a little beard, but I'm looking a little bit uh, scruffy. So, uh, <laughs> oh, not that Muhammad. Okay, it must be another Muhammad that was running a marathon. All right, so anyways, uh, real quick, um, you bought your airline tickets. Good, good. So uh, real quickly, you guys, we're doing a event down in uh, Vegas. Uh, we're doing it March 18th through the 20th. So I'm going to go ahead and post it right here. Can you all see that? It is houseflippingsummit.com. The website is not up yet, houseflippingsummit.com. Uh, we're going to test it out in Las Vegas. We're only going to keep it, we're going to keep it pretty small this first time around. Um, we're going to keep it to about 20 to 25 people. Uh, it's going to be in Las Vegas. It's going to be at the Platinum Hotel. You're going to go in there. You're going to get inspired. You're going to get educated. You're going to get informed. Uh, you're going to network with other people from across the country that are doing like-minded things that you're doing, okay? And there's nothing better for you to do in your business than to uh, link up with people that are doing the same stuff that uh, you're doing, okay? So uh, it's going to be a pretty awesome event. It's going to be March 18th through the 20th in beautiful and sunny Las Vegas, Nevada. So it's going to be right off of the strip, uh, close to the airport, uh, but uh, we'll give you guys some more details as uh, the time progresses. So um, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get this party started and jumping. So oh, thanks, uh, Mr. Muhammad. I appreciate that. So some people call me uh, a, a douchebag, but uh, thank you. I appreciate that. So anyways, uh, let's get the party started. Um, what questions do you guys have? This is about you guys. What questions do y'all have? Go ahead, hit me up. Ask me anything that's real estate related. Ask me anything that's business related. Ask me anything that is online marketing related. Don't ask me anything that you wouldn't ask in front of your grandma. You know, don't make me block folks. <laughs> but go ahead, uh, ask me your questions. And I'm gonna sit here and bob my head while I'm waiting for questions. All right, so Miss Muhammad said, virtual wholesaling, how to's. Okay, so uh, virtual wholesaling, if you are first starting out, I totally recommend that everybody who is starting out, um, they start off in their local market. It just makes it a lot easier, okay? But for some people, that's not an option. If you live internationally, if you live in a city or a town that um, only has, uh, that has a small population, that may not be an option for you, okay? So the first thing that you need to do is if you're gonna virtual wholesale, you need to make sure that you have feet on the ground in whatever city that you're gonna uh, wholesale at, okay? So if you are living in, let's say, Miami, Florida, and you want to flip houses, um, let's say in Phoenix, Arizona, okay? Obviously, you can't go out there and see the house unless you want to book airline tickets, which you probably don't. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is get feet on the ground. So you can do that by uh, teaming up with another wholesaler out in that area. You can do that by connecting with a realtor out of that area, okay? 
and it's easy for you to do that you can go to craigslist you can uh, just google uh we buy houses in phoenix arizona whatever area that you're trying to get into uh you can network with other people at uh, meetup.com okay and then once you get a person who's gonna be your feet on the ground uh what you're gonna do is you're gonna have a jv agreement okay the jv agreement is going to state that for you teaming up with the other wholesaler in that other city you're gonna get 50 percent of the uh profits any profits uh that you uh make and the other wholesaler will get 50 percent of the profits okay so very important you always need to have a jv agreement when you're working with other people another thing is you want to make sure that you're teaming up with uh somebody that's honest and trustworthy you don't want to uh network with somebody that's dishonest uh because it's too easy for somebody to screw you out of your money okay and uh once you do that your obligation is you're going to do the marketing you're going to market for sellers right you're going to get these properties under contract you're going to talk to the sellers on the phone and the person who is your feet on the ground in the other city they're going to be the ones who are actually going down to the house they're going to be the ones taking the contract out to the uh, seller to sign and they're going to bring the buyers to the table okay so that's pretty much in a two minute nutshell how you do virtual wholesaling but again if you're just starting off i totally recommend that uh you um start off in your own city so uh where do you get the jv form agreements i actually give that to my students but um uh i don't have it as a free giveaway but if you go ahead and uh google it you should be able to find uh jv agreements so just uh google jv agreements wholesalers or wholesaling all right uh i saw two more questions you're welcome miss muhammad i saw two more questions but i didn't uh see them all right, D. Harris 91 says, what's the most effective way to market for sellers? Direct mail? You know what? There's plenty of effective ways for you to market to uh, direct, I'm sorry, to uh, motivated sellers. Uh, the three biggest things that you can do to get motivated sellers. Number one, direct mail. You hit the nail on the head, D. Harris. He said, here comes the trouble. Hey, the trouble was already here before you joined the broadcast, Chris Amaro. So look, number one, direct mail. All right, I recommend doing postcards. So to uh, absentee owners, vacant houses, high equity, okay? That's one option you can do. The uh, second option you could do, and I don't mean to flip you guys off. Look, I, I almost put this finger down and flip you guys off, so I'm going to keep this finger up so I'm not flipping you all off. So option number two, banner signs. 50 to 100 banner signs each weekend, okay? I promise you guys I was not flipping you off. I promise you. I love you guys. All right, so option number two, bandit signs, 50 to 100 on the corners. You're going to put them out on late Friday night or early Saturday morning, okay? Now, um, if you're scared of running into cops or whatnot, then just do it early Saturday morning, okay? And uh, you're going to do 50 to 100 of those uh, each and every single weekend, and uh, you're going to get tons of calls, okay? Third option is you can do internet, okay? Now, this is a little bit more technical, a little bit more precise. Uh, this is not for the week you will go ahead and set up a google adwords account right and you're going to have a website that has a lead generation page on it and so when people land on your website they're going to either call your number or email you their information like their name their number email address property address all that other stuff you can get a sweet awesome website from investorcarrot.com investorcarrot.com all right what's up d sterling what's up man sky investments thank you for inviting your followers you are awesome sky i love you man um all right so uh basically choose one okay don't try and do everything okay so choose either banner signs either postcards or google adwords but don't do all three at once okay unless you're balling it out and you're like a super ninja all right and you got like a crazy high budget okay now if you have no money if you're uh, broke busted and disgusted then you're going to need to do a lot of cold calling okay you're going to need to go ahead and uh go to um uh, look at for sale by owners fsbos off of craigslist off of zillow.com go ahead and heart me up you guys i love the hearts you know it's coming right from my heart right here well that's my right side so i guess my heart's on the left side so right here heart heart me up heart me up all right so look uh you a free source that you can do if you have limited budget for your marketing is uh call up fsbos off of craigslist uh <laughs> red hearts call up fsbos off of zillow all right can you guys hear me i know it's getting kind of windy out here so let me know if you guys can't hear me all right so um what you're going to want to do is uh thank you over four millions appreciate it my man so what you're going to need to do is when you're calling up fsbos don't just call up 10 of them okay don't just call up 10 a day and 
call it a day. You know, you're not going to get any business like that. You're going to need to go balls to the wall and call up like 50 to 100 of them each day, okay, if you're going that route. Um, another option that you can do is you can go driving for dollars if you have a limited budget, okay? Go driving for dollars, look for vacant houses, collect the address. Thank you, Sky. I appreciate it, man. Hey, I, I uh, saw your broadcast the other day with you getting your pedicure, man. Like, I probably need to get uh, my feet done up too, man. My feet are looking like Flintstone feet. I got some Fred Flintstone feet. I'm not even... Now, I'm not even going to show you guys my feet. I don't want y'all to, to block me or anything like that. But, uh, <laughs> no, my feet aren't that bad, maybe. So, look, uh, driving for dollars, look for vacant properties. Look for properties that look like it is vacant. Look for properties that have overgrown grass, weeds, uh, the windows and the doors are all boarded up. I mean, the house looks like it's in general disrepair, okay? The house looks raggedy, okay? I'm going to say it again. The house looks raggedy. Those are the type of houses that you want for your vacant houses. You're going to collect the address. You're going to take it to your uh, house. You're going to uh, look it up on your uh, property tax assessor's website, right? And uh, you're going to look up the name of the person who owns the house. You're going to mail them a yellow letter to their billing address that's on file, all right? Uh, no, I'm not in Houston. I'm in Las Vegas. You're going to uh, send them a yellow letter to their house. You're going to say, hey, hi, Mary. My name is Daniel, and I want to buy your house fast for cash. Please give me a call as soon as you can. Call or text me at this number. Thanks. You know, and if you're artistic, you can put little smiley faces and hearts and little drawings of a house or whatever, you know. Um, and then just smell them. So that's what you do. All right. Come on. Give me some more questions, you guys. And heart me up. Invite your friends. Invite your Twitter followers and all that. All right, uh, Miss Hill said, I believe it's Sharonda, she said, do you only do rehabs or multi-niches? Okay, so um, I started doing rehabs uh, when I got um, involved in TV, and um, it was a pretty crazy experience. We made uh, pretty good money, uh, but we also had a lot of heartache, okay? So my philosophy is when you're doing rehabs, you can typically – make a lot more money per deal than you do wholesale, okay? Uh, when you're rehabbing houses, you should always try to go uh, for the sum of making at least twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 plus per rehab, okay? When you're doing wholesaling, you should look for at least five k for your wholesale deal. Now, the thing with uh, rehabbing is there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, spinning wheels and gears that are rolling, okay? So it's not as easy for you to get into a rehab and out of it than it is a wholesale deal, okay? When you get into a rehab, you're dealing with a lot of different variables. Uh, <laughs> Snow said uh, termites. Termites is something that uh, can happen. I've dealt with things where, you know, we've had animal feces. We've had some crazy stuff happen at rehabs. Um, but long story short, uh, with rehabs, uh, more profit potential. You have a higher ceiling for your profit potential, but you also have a lot more drama that can happen. You're dealing with other people's money because people are uh, actually giving you money from their IRA. They're lending you money. Uh, you may have to get a, a hard loan, okay? And somebody has to pay. Somebody's responsible for that money, okay? And if you F up, you know, I'm not going to, you know, curse up on here, but if you jack up, then – you're liable for that. You know what I'm saying? And that's nothing that you want to do or jump into unless you're ready for it, okay? So um, my philosophy now is I have a wholesale first uh, philosophy, okay? I have a wholesale first philosophy. If the deal is sweet, if the deal um, I can get into it and maybe only put five or ten or even $15,000 of rehab into it, and, I mean, it's like cosmetics, and I can make over thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on it, and it's a quick deal, then I'm going to jump into it and do a rehab, okay? So my philosophy is, number one, wholesaling, and then number two, rehab, all right? So anyways, uh, I saw like 20 million questions pop up, but I didn't read them all. So she said, right, so multi-REI streams, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Uh, Snow said, I like to move into two years, rehab, tax-free cash, yes. Uh, D. Harris said, can you still make money from a property with no equity, or does that fall into short? Okay, yeah, so if a property has no equity on it, if it's severely under equity, like let's say the low, the, the highest you can give a person is 80,000 bucks for the house, right? But let's say they owe 120,000 bucks on the house, right? And that happens a lot in uh, Vegas, Phoenix, and some of those uh, areas that got hit hard by the, uh, by the real estate crash, okay? That is definitely a short sale deal. Um, you don't want to fool around with a short sale deal. I'm not going to tell you why you don't want to 
fool around with the short sale deal, but just don't, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get with a short sale uh, specialist. You're gonna get with somebody who specializes in uh, short sales and loves short sales. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they love it. They're married to short sales, you know? You don't wanna get into the business of doing short sales. You're going to go ahead and refer them the lead, okay? And then you're gonna work out um, some type of agreement where, uh, yeah, she said it's a uh, short sales are a mess. They are, you know. Um, you're gonna get a a uh, percentage or a flat fee if that short sale specialist is able to close the deal and make money. Okay, so maybe five hundred, maybe a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred, maybe five or ten or twenty five percent of whatever money they make. Uh, it's all everything is negotiable in real estate. Okay, but uh, definitely refer all your short sale leads away. Don't do it. Okay. All right, next question. JM USA FX says, what's the best negotiation technique once the seller is on the phone? Okay, so uh, that's a very good question. Um, one thing that I like to do, and let me readjust this phone. One thing that I like to do, you guys, is um, when I am talking with the seller, I try to be a problem solver, okay? So I try to be like that person that is uh, trying to get them into a win-win situation. So I, try, I always make sure I get the story, okay? Um, and I always make sure that I talk. I ask them a lot of open-ended questions. I ask them, okay, well, uh, Mr. Harris, um, you know, so you're selling this house over here on 4th Street. Uh, why are you selling it? You know, uh, what's the deal? Why, why don't you want to keep it? And then they're going to tell me the story, right? And so, you know, I'm just... Uh, asking them a lot of questions you know I'm getting to know them I'm getting to know what their pain is okay because uh, people move the fastest when you're able to pinpoint their pain okay and once you understand what their pain is then you can proceed on to giving them a solution to cure that pain okay so if a person says that um, okay well I need to sell this house because I've had it in my family for 20 years I inherited the property from my aunts that just passed away and there are people that are breaking into there they're vandalizing it they're uh ripping out the copper uh they're taking stuff that they should be taking um then that's the pain point you know they don't want to deal with that no more okay you are going to be the problem solver okay and so once you understand that then you can move on and you just ask them okay well great great so uh all right look so here's what we do mr harris uh this is what my business is uh we are looking at uh, scooping up two or three more properties this month in your area okay uh now we need to find the deals that um give us the most bank for our buck so we can't get everybody's deals and we still have about 10 or 12 other people to call okay so uh now if i can offer you a cash offer for your property okay i'm going to take your property in as is shape you're not going to have to pay a single cent to fix it up you're not going to pay any real estate commissions. You're not going to pay for any closing costs because I'm going to cover all that. I'm going to make it drama free for you, Mr. Harris. What is the lowest cash offer that you could even accept for this property? You ask that question or something to that effect and you just stay silent, shut up, wait for them to talk. Um, well, I think I can do 50,000 bucks for the house. I can sell the house for 50,000 bucks. Okay. Um, is... 50,000, uh, well, I don't know, Mr. Harris. I mean, is that the best that you can do? Um, I don't know. Maybe I can drop it down to 40,000, but 40,000 is the, the least. I can't take any lower than 40,000 bucks. Okay, well, 40,000 bucks, um, I think we can do that, okay? And so, look, by this time, you guys, you guys should, should have already ran your numbers. You guys should already know uh, what your MAO is. Your MAO stands for maximum, maximum allowable offer that you can uh, give the person for their property. So you should already know. So if your maximum allowable offer is 50,000 bucks and they just said that they'll take $40,000 for the house, that's game time right there, okay? So what you're gonna do is, uh, you never wanna sound too excited. So don't sound like me on the, uh, like, like you guys can probably feel my energy right now. I'm totally excited, you know, I'm gung-ho. But you know, just kinda keep it cool, keep it chill, like, okay uh forty thousand dollars okay um yeah you know i mean yeah you know what we may be able to work with that um you know what mr harris you know i i really like you and i definitely want to make sure that we make this win-win situation um let's go ahead and make it forty thousand let's go ahead and uh, do forty thousand dollars if that would help you then let's go ahead and stay at forty thousand so what i'm gonna do is uh we're gonna meet up today or tomorrow you just give me a good time for you um i'll clear out my schedule we'll meet up I'll look at the house. If everything looks uh, like it's in good shape, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna sign a contract right on the spot. 
for uh, us to buy your house for 40000 bucks, and you're going to go into the rest of your spiel. So that's how you do it. Wow, my voice just cracked there for a second like I was going through puberty. All right, next question. Hey, and while we're waiting for the next question, hey, it's, uh, tomorrow is going to be, not tomorrow, but uh, Sunday is going to be my 13th, no, my 12th year anniversary. All right? So, yay! Happy anniversary. So I'm taking my wife out somewhere uh, special. We're going to see the uh, Martin Lawrence show, and uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So uh, thank you, Motivator. And Miss Mohammed said, are contractors necessary every time? Um, no, uh, contractors aren't necessary every time. Um, if you're rehabbing a house, then you need a contractor. But uh, if you're not rehabbing a house, uh, thanks, Sterling. If you're not rehabbing a house, then you don't need a contractor. Now, to estimate repairs on a uh, property, so thanks, guy. Yeah. All right. Um, when you're estimating repairs on a house, if you're doing a wholesale deal, just keep it simple, you know. Um, just take $10 times the square footage, $15 times the square footage, uh, $20 times the square footage. So $10 times the square footage of the property, if the property is in pretty good shape, it just needs a couple pieces of lipstick on it. You know, like, you know, maybe fresh paint of uh, fresh paint on the walls. I can't even talk now or frame, formulate my thoughts. Um, $15 if the house needs, uh, $15 times the square footage if the house needs moderate uh, repairs. 20 to 30 bucks if it needs more major repairs. If the house is like a burnout, then you may go as high as 30, 40 bucks times the square footage of the house, okay? So, um, next question. Keep them coming. All right, after the initial talk with the agent, what follow-up questions should I ask them if the house is MLS? All right, so if the house is on MLS, you don't want to fool with it as a wholesale deal, okay? And, um, wow, that's a great palm tree back here. You guys like my palm tree? I'm just noticing it right here. It's awesome. All right, so back on topic. Um, if a house is on the MLS, if you're going for it as a wholesale deal, um, I'm trying to make you guys jealous, you know, with the palm tree and it's winter time and all that. <laughs> So, look, if the house is on MLS, you guys, you don't want to fool around with it with uh, if it's a wholesale deal. That's typically uh, not going to work, okay? Now, if you are looking to, uh, she said I'm jelly, um, if the house that you're looking to procure, you're going to get it for a rehab deal, then, yeah, that's fine. So, uh, you talk to the agent, and you pretty much just ask them the same questions that uh, you would ask a motivated seller. You're, you're trying to get the best deal, okay? So, you need to ask them questions like, okay, well, um, how low can your, uh, your seller go on this property? Okay, next question. Hey, what time is it, you guys? Because I plan on only being out here for 20 minutes, and uh, my only time that I have is on my phone. You say you need a palm tree in your life? All right, yeah, everybody needs a palm tree in their life. 227. All right, I'm going to take, like, two more questions. But look, uh, Sky, right here. This is your palm tree right here. There. Yes, now you got a palm tree in your life. All right, cool. So I'm going to take two more questions, and then I'm going to bounce because I'm acting like... I'm unemployed and I ain't got a job to do. All uh, right, Jay flips flips more homes. What's the best way to market for international buyers? That is pretty awesome. All right, so for international buyers, um, first and foremost, try and get people that are nationally first. You know what I'm saying? Don't uh, don't stereotype or knock off your local buyers. Okay, but uh, the best way to find buyers international, local, wherever. Um, is you can go through uh, the different groups on uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is great. You can go on different uh, Facebook groups. You're going to look for, uh, search for things like Real Estate Investments Phoenix or Real Estate Investments Tucson, Real Estate Investments Dallas, you know. You can even Google it, you know. You can uh, go to different online forums, okay. And the people that are looking to buy deals in um uh, let's say Dallas, they're going to go to a Dallas meetup, uh, dot com group, you know, as Finley said, um, they're going to go to a Fort Lauderdale meetup group if they're looking to buy it. Okay. Because yeah, there's uh, people that are in Canada, uh, China, they're trying to buy properties over here in America just because, uh, it's a sweet deal. Okay. So, um, keep on hearting me up. You guys, you guys are awesome. And, uh, real quick, if you guys want some free notes on, <laughs> I had it written down on my paper and it just, the wind just blew it out of my hands. If you guys want some free notes on, uh, and contracts that I use for business, 
then send an email to gift at houseflippingdojo.com. Gift at houseflippingdojo.com. Thanks, Buckles. All right, one more question, and I'm out of here. All right, uh, JM USA FX says, what's the best exit strategy to include in uh, your contract? Okay, best exit strategies to include in your contracts is to just keep it open. All my contracts uh, state, and I'm talking about all the contracts that I do uh, that are direct to seller. If you're doing a contract on a property that's on MLS, then you're gonna have to use your, uh, your state approved real estate contract. But if I'm going to uh, direct to a seller, then my contract is always gonna state that I have the option of assigning this contract to any party of my choice, okay? So regardless of whether you are gonna wholesale that property or regardless of whether you're going to hold that property and fix it and flip it, um, you always have the option to assign it, okay? So you always want to give yourself, you guys, you always want to give yourselves um, options on how to exit your uh, your uh, real estate contract. So anyways, uh, peace, God bless. Thank y'all for being on here and enjoying a little bit of my world. I love each and every one of you guys. Heart me up, share this broadcast. Um, happy Friday, TGIF. Adios, Arriva Dirce. Hasta mañana. All right, I'm going to try this again.